Good afternoon, I'm Rich Nass with Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here with Raphael Taubiger. He is the Global FE Manager with IER Systems. Good afternoon, Raphael, how are you? Hello, Rich, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to be part of this session with you. <laughs> well, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, we're here to talk about security. This is actually part two of a five-part series. In part one, we, we talked about legislative issues, and here in part two, we're, we're discussing IP protection. Now, from my perspective, uh, you don't have to ask somebody why they need to protect their IP. I mean, that's very, very obvious. If you, somebody has access to your IP, if they could edit, alter, even steal your IP, you got big problems. Um, and from what I understand, IR Systems has a new tool called the C-Trust tool that can really stop that. Uh, would you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, uh, for sure, uh, Rich, yeah. So, uh, as I said, uh, IP protection, uh, no, no reasons to discuss why people need it. And uh, C-Trust comes uh, to help the developers to solve it in an easy way. I mean, uh, we want uh, to, of course, use cryptography, encrypt application, use uh, some secure boot uh, mechanism uh, to make that work. And uh, that is very easy, of course, and integrated. That's our main ambition, to make it easy to accomplish IP protection uh, on, on the application from developers, yeah. Hey, why don't you show me how this works? What I mainly have open here is actually uh, a project uh, for one of the uh, boards that I have here. And um, as uh, I said before, integration is key and we want to make it easy for customers to use it. Use it. And uh, what is mind blowing for uh, developers is that when you um, install Citrust, you have this security menu just available on uh, the ID, the embedded workbench that is well known by the developers. And uh, it's always key to make it easy to use. So if I have an application or I'm starting an application, uh, the only thing I need to do uh, to enable IP protection, of course, under the security menu, I need to enable uh, the protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, from here, uh, of course, Okay, yeah. Uh, from here, uh, once I uh, enable uh, the IP protection, uh, I will have, of course, a collection of settings that I, will, that I want to use. That all is centralized in what we call uh, the security context uh, with keys, certificates, uh, anti-rollback, and so on. And that's uh, mainly the only thing that uh, the developers need to do to use uh, uh, Citrust. And what I also want to show you is that how it fits into the flow. So mainly uh, when people are using a web at Workbench. Uh, there is, of course, a normal build process, uh, and uh, that's, of course, that happens too. But when I enable uh, the security protection and do a build of my project, uh, you will see that at the end, uh, it comes one extra step. <laughs> and that's, of course, key uh, on what we have here. So you will see that the output that uh, we generate here uh, gets actually mastered. And the mastering mainly means that that image uh, gets encrypted and the only entity in this world that will understand it is, of course, a secure boot manager. So that's how easy it's done. Uh, you have a secure boot manager uh, and then connect it uh, with the master application. And uh, all the capabilities from the Babbage Workbench, I mean, debugging, building, using optimizations, that's still there. So we want to make it easy and, of course, not make the developers uh, have to give up uh, some of the nice features. And if I just show you uh, what um, I have here really quickly. So I have an application running, uh, the Secure Boot Manager uh, allowed it uh, to run. And then I have some uh, interactive way. And uh, if I want to get some information, for example, uh, what uh, it's actually there as, um, uh, let's say, uh, kind of not the secrets, but the public information, uh, I can, uh, for example, look here on uh, the identity or what is uh, used. And uh, it will, for example, tell you how long the certificate is valid and so on. This is all, this is all really interesting. Um, how would somebody have done this without C-Trust? Mm. So they definitely would have, uh, they would struggle a lot, <laughs> definitely. Um, and the first thing is that uh, we talked to some customers that they implemented their own solution or they used some open source. And then, of course, uh, they could not really uh, trust it or really rely on it. Uh, on the other part, they use some loose pieces, secure boot manager from one company, and then uh, PKI or certificates, uh, how to uh, work with that. Uh, what do I use during development? What do I do uh, for release? So they have to integrate all this by themselves. And then the worst, when they go, once they go to a new project, they have to do it over again. And with Citrus, it's always the same flow. And it's just 
a checkbox and everything is there and uh, ready available for the for the developers. Yeah.